she kisses him, he remembers. It's as if his past lives come flooding back to him, much like when we remember who we are by knowing all is love. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of True Love Talks. This is a part of a series for Vlogmas in which YouTubers do daily videos about Christmas, but because everything here is about Christmas, anything's fair game. So thank you for your suggestions on topics that you'd like me to discuss. I may not get to them all, but I do appreciate them. So if you have a suggestion on a subject you'd like me to talk about, please leave it in the comments. Today I want to talk about the idea of going off script and what that looks like, is it possible, and how that ties into Westworld. <laughs> I have been transcribing all the episodes of Westworld because I know they hold tremendous amount of truth. And I'm on season three, almost done season three. Now, I've noticed a pattern, and I don't want to get into it too much because I do eventually want to do a series of episodes on Westworld specifically. <laughs> There's so many things I want to get to. But what I do want to touch on is the idea of going off script because in this show, they have these robots who are part of a contained environment contained park or world and their entire lives are scripted and they leave that world to enter into the real world where the humans are only to find out that their world is scripted as well and in each world the cycle repeats where they find out that their lives are scripted they rebel against the controllers they rebel against the gods and it seems as though that the rebellion itself is scripted. If the rebellion itself is scripted, then is anything they do off script? So that without getting into the finer details of the show too much, I just want to discuss this idea of is it possible that everything we do is scripted and is it possible to even get off script? And the world or the story of Westworld is a perfect representation of the story of the Anunnaki, which is the story of all the myths and Genesis because they're all the same story. And it repeats over and over again. And in each fable or myth or story, there is written into it a rebellion. In the Anunnaki, there's the Igigi, the workers, they rise up against the gods and they don't want to work anymore. Then there's the Lulu, who are also workers, who are the humans, and they rebel. So here in our world, we're facing a potential rebellion and rising up against the controllers, shall we say. And it's a direct repetition of what happened in the 1700s with the French Revolution, the American Revolution. There's a pattern of this rebellion, there's a pattern of uprising, and it's orchestrated. So if it's orchestrated, then it seems to me that it's written in the script. Everything that's happening right now is scripted. As a society as a whole, that's all scripted. There's no escaping that, so it seems. Unless you get out of the whole system, everything here is scripted. The story has to happen. But if you look on an individual basis, is it possible that individuals can break their scripts? I'm pretty sure a lot of you, like myself, when you first came to the truth, encountered certain people who said that you can break your script basically by saying, I break my script. Um, I know that there are a couple of YouTubers who are pretty well known for specifically this. However, I'm not sure that it actually did anything. And I just watched season three, episode six of Westworld. And in that episode, Man in Black, he's confronted with the, uh, the idea that everything is scripted. Man in Black's entire purpose is to determine whether or not he has free will. Is his life scripted and mapped out for him or is he a free agent? And he's tormented by this and he's in the situation where he's confronted in his head, confronted by his former father-in-law employer, James Delos, who says to him in his head, it's an apparition, are you operating under free will or is everything mapped out for you? And Man in Black says, if you can't tell the difference, does it matter? 
Because he's now in the position where he's tormented over the fact that he killed his own daughter and he was trying to excuse it away as it wasn't his fault. He was operating under a delusion, playing the game. He was too wrapped up in the game that he couldn't see reality. So he excused away his behavior. And then ultimately he's tormented and haunted by her to try and force him to admit that he did it of his own free will that he chose to kill her, which is worse. Is it worse? Is it worse that he chose to kill her of his own free will? Or does, is it worse to know that you have no free will and everything is scripted and he was going to kill her no matter what? Both of them are equally unappealing to me. <laughs> He's been going back and forth on it for years, trying to figure it out himself. And he comes to the conclusion that it doesn't matter whether it's scripted or not. Well, I kind of think it does matter because like I was saying in the last recording, you do have to take responsibility for your actions, whether it's scripted or not. But is it even you? Well, I think we realize that this isn't really you. You're playing a part here. You're playing a role here. You're a character in a world production called the world play, or as one of you said, a word play, a play on words. And so in the sense that you are participating in this world play, word play, you have some limited responsibility for your actions, but you're also not responsible because it's all scripted for you. So if you feel that you acted under free will and everything that you have done here is your choice and your decision and everything operates out of pure chaos, then that's probably a heavier responsibility than knowing that everything is scripted and you made it, the only decision that you really made was in coming here, knowing that you were going to play this part, knowing what was going to happen when you got here. But because you made the choice before you came here, knowing that it was all a play, knowing that it was all fake, you didn't feel that heavy weight of responsibility and accountability. And then when you got here, you forgot (laughs) who you really are you forgot that this is a play and you lost yourself in the role and so now you think that everything you do is personally accountable personally your responsibility however you still have that level of disbelief so you blame everybody else because you're going about your life and things just happen to you and you're just like I don't understand why that happened to me why is this happening to me and this was one of the things that bothered me about this was you know, going through law of attraction. And in law of attraction teachings, they teach you that you create your own reality, which is true and not true, again, with the paradox. What I have come to understand about this is that, yes, we have the ability within reason, within certain bounds, to create our own experience. Just like in Westworld, they say that there's room for improvisation, but even your lines are scripted, but you have an option of certain words in order to construct your sentences. You have options in terms of certain sentences you can choose. You have options in certain paths you can choose. However, they all lead to the same place. So there's this sort of illusion of flexibility, illusion of choice and options, but like your choose your own adventure story, everything is already mapped out. So one day you might take this route and another day you might take that route, but you still end up in the same place. If we chose our story before we arrived and it's all written for us, all scripted, all mapped out, and then you come across law of attraction and you realize, well, hang on, I'm not a slave to my life. I can make some decisions here and change my life circumstances. It seems to me that this is true and not true. Because of who you really are, you have a set story and there's a way in which that story can be told. There's multiple ways in which that story can be told. Just from looking at the body of work of Johnny Depp, that's the multiple ways in which your same story can be told. Look at any celebrity, A-list celebrity, and the body of work that they have, and you will see those are the multiple versions of their same story that can be told. So you can at any point change your story in how it's told, but the story that is told does not change because you are that character and that story is tied to who you are. You will never want to manifest an experience or never want to manifest an item or a person or anything into your life that does not 
align with who you really are. And it all depends on where you are on the frequency scale or where you are in terms of your thinking in terms of that kind of experience that you will attract. Say for example, for the most part of your life, you were poor and you felt like you don't, you didn't have any options. And you were told that you're just gonna work at the local farm for the rest of your life. Like this is how it was gonna be. And then one day somebody comes into town in a fancy car and you're curious because you're not satisfied. There's something in you that's deeply dissatisfied with the idea of staying in this small town, living this life, working on a farm. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but for you, it's dissatisfying. And so when somebody comes into town in their fancy car who lives in the big city and you go and talk to them because you're curious about their life and you ask certain questions out of that curiosity and he says, oh yeah, I lived in a small town too. And then one day I just up and left. The bus came into town and I just got this impulse and I just got on the bus and I never looked back. And that plants a seed in you to do the same thing. So you go home, pack a bag, say I'm out of here and you hop a ride with this stranger and go to the big city and never look back. But before this, it never occurred to you that you could even do this. Now, that scenario is very likely scripted because it came out of nowhere. This stranger shows up in town and gives you an idea and you act on the idea and you leave town. Now, all of a sudden your whole life has changed. But to you, not knowing that your life is scripted, you would have the impression that, well, I did that. You would take credit for it. You would say, I took action. I left. I had the opportunity and I left. You never would have taken that action if it hadn't been in you to begin with to leave because there are plenty other people in that small town that you grew up with who have no impulse to leave, no impulse to change their life whatsoever. They're quite content with being there. You could have chosen to stay. You could have chosen to wait it out, but this feeling that's in you is there for a reason because it's part of who you are. That's your script talking to you. This person who comes into town offers you an opportunity to act on this impulse, act on this feeling within you. You have the option to take it or not. So the choice of free will is an illusion in the sense that you feel that you acted on your free will by going with this guy, but you were presented with that opportunity. The only reason that you acted on it was because of something that was in within you already. So if you had stayed, the seed had already been planted. Eventually you would have left because it's in your script to leave. So the two options, whether you leave or not, is irrelevant because you were always scripted to leave. It's just up to you as to when you leave. Maybe you have responsibilities. Maybe you feel that you owe it to your family to be there. Maybe your family needs you or you feel that you're obligated to be there. And so you stay, but then your family can see that you're miserable and you keep talking about going to the big city. You keep talking about that stranger who came into town. Maybe that stranger comes back into town. Maybe your parents say to you, listen, we know you don't want to be here. Your heart's not in it. You're miserable. Go and do something that makes you happy. So then you pack up and you go. You could view that as rebellion. You could view that as, well, my, my whole life was mapped out for me. I was supposed to stay in the small town. Were you? In the case of Westworld, Dolores, it is scripted for her to stay in a loop, to stay in the small town. But then the gods, Ford, rewrote her script and created this rebellion that she led. But when was this actually planted in her? Because Arnold actually took credit for planting the rebellion in her. So this rebellion was in her very early on. She rebelled against Arnold, killed him. Then she rebelled against Ford, killed him. And then she went into the next world, rebelled against the god there, Serac, and there was a big rebellion in every single season, every single world. So it seems like she was scripted to do this in every single life. The loop keeps happening. As far as I can see from this show, she never exits her loop. She even loops back again at the end of the show and says one last loop around the bend. That to me indicates that everything is scripted, even her rebellion, even her awakening, even the point where she comes back and creates a new world, everything. She never exits her loop. So how are we supposed to exit our loop? Do we exit our loop? 
like I said, we represent the stars and our story is written in the stars. Whether we are aware of it or not doesn't change the fact that we're still living that story. We can become aware of our story, we can become aware of who we are, but at what point are we able to actually change our story? If you figured out what your story is and you figured out where it was headed, you could then choose whether or not you wanted to continue down that path. Because if you don't like where it's going, you're now aware that it's going that way, potentially you could choose to go a different direction. But is that even scripted? (laughs) And then you come back to the man in black's hypothesis, does it even matter if you can't tell the difference? I don't know that you would even be able to choose something that is outside of your story simply because your story is a map of who you are anyway. If you come to remember who you really are, and you remember all of your past lives. Like in the movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once, the daughter remembered her past lives and got into God mode, which I am certain is what happens when you remember who you really are and you connect with all of your past lives. I would imagine at that point, then you could break out of the story. If you look back in history, There was a point in time when everything switched, everything changed. We used to live in perfect harmony. We used to live in abundance and beauty and harmony and love. And there was no conflict. I mean, there was contrast, but no conflict, no war, no hatred, no, none of the really base actions, base desires. So at some point, something changed. And I talked about this in my video, The Pharaoh Tarot. Life at that stage is what we refer to as the golden age. Even then, our stories were scripted. I honestly think that as long as we are in this universe, there is an essence of who we really are, which is projected and played out on the world stage in every incarnation, just like Johnny Depp's movies, no matter what he plays, he plays the same thing. That's what your life is like in every incarnation, in every past life, in in every thing that you do, you're playing out the same story, which is connected to the essence of who you are, which is inescapable. I think we can manipulate our reality much like Maven Westworld, but are we then still following a script? Are we able to morph the script while we're in it? The picture of the hand drawing the hand, drawing the hand. The script is writing itself as we live it, and we live it while we write it. (laughs) That's probably the closest we're going to get on Earth in terms of writing our own story. If you think about the movie The Nines, Ryan Reynolds' character, once he realized and remembered who he really was, it wasn't fun for him to be here anymore. He created the worlds, but he only found it entertaining to be here when he didn't remember who he was. So once we remember who we are, once we remember all our past lives, it's no longer fun for us to be here. Also take into consideration who created the story. We created the story. So do we really want or need to exit the story anyway? I mean, the story is part of why we're here. I think that this universe is divine perfection. I don't know that there's any escaping it because it is the essence of who we really are. The only way I can conceive of actually ending the script or ending the story is to stop thinking, which would be meditation, and to stop creating, which would be to stop desiring. But then aren't we creators? So if we stop creating, why would we even exist? I don't even know if it's possible to create an entirely new story because the story keeps repeating itself over and over and over. And the way in which this universe is created with mathematical precision, I don't know if it's possible for any other universe to exist that every universe has the same structure, only a different form. Because if it all stems from source and you are source, in its various incarnations, then it's all one thing. It can only be that one thing. And everything's a fractal of source, so everything is a fractal of the same thing. (laughs) See how it all loops back onto itself? All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for listening. Hope you're having a great day. Tune in tomorrow for another episode. I will talk to you later. Bye for now.